Shavua Tov, I'm Rolene Marks. This is the Israel Brief brought to you as always by Lay of the Land as we bring you the top stories making headlines every Monday to Thursday. Now, as you can well guess, the news in Israel, like news all around the world, is dominated by the sad passing of Queen Elizabeth II. When we concluded our broadcast on Thursday, we expressed our concern and our thoughts and our prayers for a speedy recovery for the monarch who had uh, taken ill and uh, in a very, very unusual press release coming from Buckingham Palace where they expressed concerns for her health. Just a matter of hours later, the sad news came in that the 96-year-old monarch had passed away peacefully at her Balmoral residence in Scotland. Queen Elizabeth II is the United Kingdom's longest reigning monarch, having reigned for 70 years. Israel, like countries around the world, expressed their shock and condolences, and no sooner had the news been broken, our Prime Minister Lapid tweeted out his condolences, saying that the Queen left an unparalleled legacy of service. The area or municipal building in Tel Aviv lit up with the Union Jack in solidarity with the British people and the walls of the old city in Jerusalem were lit up with the Israeli flag and the Union Jack as an expression of sorrow and solidarity. President Herzog, who will represent the State of Israel at the state funeral on Monday, sent out a press release. In his release, he spoke of the magnificent inspirational legacy that the Queen leaves behind, calling her an icon of stable, responsible leadership and a beacon of morality. He also spoke fondly about how his late parents had been received several times by Her Majesty the Queen for an audience and the warm hospitality and the fond memories that they have. I think we join the whole world in wishing her a safe and restful peace, ma'am. You have certainly earned it. We also would like to congratulate King Charles on his session, even though it comes with very, very difficult circumstances, and his son, Prince William, and his wife, Catherine, who are now the Prince and Princess of Wales. In other news, Prime Minister Lapid is on an official state visit to Germany. The Prime Minister landed last night and was received by a guard of honour as he was accompanied by Holocaust survivors. The Prime Minister is in Germany to have high-level meetings with both President Steinmeier and Chancellor Olaf Scholz regarding the Iranian possibility of uh, uh, becoming nuclear. Yesterday, in his cabinet briefing, the Prime Minister thanked the United Kingdom, Germany and France for their renewed stance against an Iranian-backed treaty. Now, uh, in his meetings with both President Steinmeier and Chancellor Scholz today, the Prime Minister spoke about how important it was to prevent Iran from becoming nuclear. In his meeting with uh, President Steinmeier, the two also spoke about rising anti-Semitism. However, just moments ago, in a dual uh, press conference, the Prime Minister and the Chancellor spoke about the importance of uh, not allowing Iran to become nuclear. The Prime Minister said that a nuclear Iran would spark a new arms race and would just increase terror around the world and that at all costs Iran must not have a weapon. The Chancellor backed the Prime Minister and also very closely uh, almost endorsed him in the upcoming elections, saying that Israel is in good hands. The Chancellor also spoke about the importance of a two-state solution. Now, just to reiterate that on the Israel Brief, we are non-partisan. We do not endorse or back any political party, but simply report the news. 
In other news, landing himself in hot water is the finance minister, Avigdor Lieberman, who accused the leader of the opposition and chairman of the Likud party, Benjamin Netanyahu, of using Goebbels and Stalin-like methods. Naturally, his comments were quickly condemned by the Likud party, who called his comments outrageous and an insult to the victims of the Holocaust. The Likud also demanded that Prime Minister Lapid and Defence Minister Gantz also condemn his comments, which they did, saying that there can never be a comparison to the Holocaust. And our final story at last, we have something positive. Is Israel and the Jewish people getting their very own superhero? Well, it turns out they are. It will be the superhero Sabra and will be played by Shira Haas in the upcoming Captain America New World Order movie set to be released on the 3rd of May 2024. And uh, if you're wondering what her superpower is, I think her superpower is just being Jewish, proudly Israeli and standing up to haters. Other thing, other people think she just makes good hummus. Let's uh, see what is released in May 2024. But that's it from me, Raleen Marks, for today. Don't forget to check out our website at www.layontheland.online our Facebook community at Lottle site, our YouTube channel at The Israel Brief. You guys know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, follow. Invite your friends to do the same. And we're on Twitter at Lay of the Land 5. I'm Raleen Marks with The Israel Brief. I'll be back tomorrow with those top stories. In the meantime, thank you for joining me and take care.